Yeah, thank you, Sonia, and uh, welcome everybody. I, I, ho I hope you'll find this interesting. So uh, yeah, my name is Tina, uh, Tina Turk, and I'm, uh, I recently joined Johns Hopkins as an assistant professor. So I'm, I'm quite fresh, I'm quite new. But I, I will show you some, some cool work that we're doing that uh, I think you will find interesting because it's connected to biological physics. And so I have one PhD student working on this. So it's basically the question, how do we selectively target membranes and cells? And uh, the challenge really is this, right? This is, this is the overall challenge in drug delivery. So how do we specifically target a given cell or a given, cell or a given tissue? And this is a major problem, for example, in, in, in cancer treatments. And that is because uh, cancer cells typically do not have a unique marker that can be targeted. But cancer cells are very similar to our own cells. They're basic, they evolved from our own cells. And because of that, they typically do not have a unique marker. Now that is different from bacteria. Uh, bacteria typically do have a unique marker, like a unique receptor or an enzyme that an antibiotic can target. And that's why antibiotics are very efficient and have very few side effects. But chemotherapy has severe side effects. Right? For example, chemotherapy can target all of the cells that are, for example, CD44 receptor, or, or, which is present in all the cells that are quickly dividing, which, is, which are cancer cells, but are also then the cells that produce our hair. That's why with chemotherapy, we usually use our hair. So uh, the, the issue is really this, right? That there are no unique markers. And then what can we do? Well, we can target the, the markers that are overexpressed in cancer cells, right? For example, specific receptors. But the problem is they're not unique, right? They're still healthy cells that have the same marker. And here on the right hand side, you can see an image. For example, if we want to target a, a, a tumor in the you know, up here in the neck, I think it's, uh, um, then most of the drug actually does not accumulate there, but accumulate somewhere else. So the question is how can statistical physics help us in uh, making some progress on this, uh, on this topic? And, uh, we can, we can take some inspiration from nature. So we can look at ma macrophages in nature. We can take a look at the phage virus or D virus, right? Is the COVID-19 virus. And we can see that in nature, most uh, biorecognition does not occur on a single ligand receptor level, but it's mostly multiple simultaneous bonds. For example, macrophage detects a bacteria by forming multiple simultaneous bonds. A phage virus infects a bacteria by multiple simultaneous this, uh, tail fiber spikes. And uh, of course, the, the COVID virus has multiple spike proteins that simultaneously interact with the cell surface. And of course, this has been known for a long time. And a simple explanation is this, well, multiple bonds are stronger than one bond. It's right? a simple explanation. But the thing is, it's not, the only reason, and it's not the only explanation why nature uses multiple simultaneous interactions. And I'll show you that there is another very important reason, and that is the selectivity. So for example, now we're going to look at simple statistical mechanics. Let's say we have a nanoparticle with, with a single ligand, and this single ligand, and we have then a portion of the membrane with three receptors. Now this single ligand can bind to any of the three receptors, so it has three states three bound states. Now, if we increase the receptor density at the number of receptors on the membrane, then let's say we increase it by a factor of two. Now we have six possible states. The number of states increased by a factor of two for a uh, monovalent nanoparticle, right? For a single ligand. But now if we have a multivalent case, right? Let's say we have a nanoparticle that interacts with surface membrane receptors via three simultaneous bonds, then you see in, in, in this case, we have to uh, look at also possible combinations that these three ligands bind to the three receptors and, and there are six, it's three factorial, right? There, there are six possible uh, combinations. But now the interesting thing is happens if now we increase the receptor density by a factor of two, now the number of possible states shoots up by a lot, right? Because now the number of possible combinations 
Yes, you know, the first one combined to any, any of the six, the second one to any of the five, the third one to any of the four. So now we have 120 states. So now we increased the receptor density by a factor of two, but the number of states shot up by a factor of 20. Okay, this is the combinatorial entropy effect. And we can calculate it basically the number of uh, combinations of binding is we have to choose lambda bonds out of NR receptors. We have to choose lambda uh, bonds out of K ligands and there are lambda factorial ways to bind them together. Okay, so this is the, the combinatorial term. So what multivalency gives us, right? So if we have multiple simultaneous bonds, we get a very sensitive uh, dependence of the number of states on the, on the number of receptors. That, and we can exploit this. For example, we can exploit this by designing multivalent nanoparticles, or we can exploit this by designing uh, multivalent polymers. And what we will want to do is, let's say we have some single bond interaction, free energy, which is given by the single bond equilibrium constant. We want to now calculate what is now the total uh, interaction between the whole nanoparticle and the cell surface. And we want to make this very selective to any changes in, let's say, receptor density. Right, so we will now go a bit through statistical mechanics to understand this. So um, yeah, I have one slide with equations. Uh, I know that equations are not very, uh, I shouldn't spend too much on them, but I need, I mean, I, I need one slide with equations. So basically, if we look at the standard adsorption, right, the standard Langmuir adsorption model, we have nanoparticles that bind to the cell membrane from a solution. In this case, let's say, the nanoparticle has uh, four ligands and it combines to sites on the, on the membrane. And let's say in this case, uh, each, each site has three receptors. Then we have to calculate the, the, the partition function, right? So all the possible ways that this nanoparticle can bind to the, to the surface receptors, right? And as we said before, we have this combinatorial factor, right? All the possible combinations gives us the combinatorial entropy. And of course, then there is also the, the contribution from, from the bond strength. Uh, so the partition function is given by that. And uh, if the number of receptors is large, then uh, we can actually find a very good approximation, uh, which is given here, right? So it's one plus number of receptors, Boltzmann factor to the power, which is the number of ligands minus one. And and here now you can see, right, if, if we have monovalent nanoparticles, right, we have, if we target cells based on a single ligand receptor bond, then K equals to one. So our partition function, which then determines the, the equilibrium constant of nanoparticle uh, cell binding, we have one plus number of receptors to one minus one, ones cancel out. So this is linear in the number of receptors. It's not very interesting. But if we have a multivalent nanoparticles, then this becomes a nonlinear function of the receptor density. And this manifests itself then uh, in this way. So if we then measure the, the surface absorption, right? So the binding of the nanoparticles to the cell membrane uh, as a function of the receptor density, for monovalent particles, we get a standard Langmuir absorption curve, right? which is not very selective. It's not very steep, shallow. But now if we increase the valency, we get something that approaches in sort of a very steep on-off activation. Okay, so now I, I hope I convinced you that if we use a multivalent particle, we, we can uh, design our system such that it is, the binding is very sensitive to receptor density. And that means we can target cells, not, not just based on the type, of the receptors or the sugars that it is expressing on the surface, but also based on the density. Right? And therefore, if we have a cell that is has a low receptor density and another cell that has a high receptor density, we can clearly distinguish them using uh, multivalency. And of course, everything so far was theory, but I want to show you that this is not just theory, it actually works in practice. So these are some experiments on, on multivalent polymers that were done by Galina Dubacheva, who is a collaborator. And well, I, I don't have to go into the detail, but it, it turns out that this simple statistical mechanical theory actually works, uh, works uh, quite well to explain the experimental data. And 
uh, it also proposes a master scaling variable so we can you know, we scale all of the experimental data on, a, on, the, on the master curve, which means that we see the simple theory can, can explain what's going on. And also, for example, we can go to the literature, look at some data on the binding of, this is hyaluronic acid to CD44 receptors. And we can then rescale the, 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 the literature data on the master curve using our theory. That means that you know, this, if I, if I go, I, I cannot really go back. No, I can go back, right? So it means that this simple theory, right? Even though that, it, I mean, it is very simple because it says that each ligand is either free, that's number one, or, the, or it is bound to any of the NR receptors with some binding energy F, right? This is uncorrelated approximation, but this actually works uh, remarkably well in practice. Um, uh, so now, now we can also consider a general case. For example, we have a cell, we have some multivalent probe. It can either be a multivalent polymer, a polymer with a lot, lot of ligands attached to it, or it could be a, a particle. We could in addition have some competitors here that compete for the binding to these receptors. We could have cofactors. For example, in many cases, if we have, let's say a protein, for example, protein annexin binds to uh, binds to a membrane via uh, calcium ions as a cofactor. Right? We can then do statistical mechanical models for all of that, and uh, it seems to work pretty well, right? This is all the experimental data. On the upper left is hyaluronic acid binding to uh, surfaces. Upper right is hyaluronic acid binding to CD44 receptors, but with some short segments as, as competitors. Uh, bottom left is binding of an annexin protein to negatively charged lipids via calcium as a cofactor. And the bottom right is the binding of multivalent nanoparticles to, uh, uh, to receptors. And using the theory, we can rescale all the data on the master curve and we can predict what happens. So. All of this data, uh, it shows super selectivity. So the steepness of, of binding is very sensitively dependent on the number of receptors on, on the cell surface, also on the number of ligands of the nanoparticle. So all of these systems are now what we call super selective. Uh, yeah, maybe I didn't, yeah, I for, forgot to explain the, the term super selectivity. Essentially, let me go back. Um, what we call super selective is anything that that has this, uh, where the slope of this curve is larger than one. So standard Langmuir absorption, the, the maximum slope here is one, so that we call it, it's not super selective, but for, for multivalent particles, this becomes larger than one, so then we call that you know, supralinear or super selective. Uh, okay, let me now go here. Okay, so I hope I, hope I oh, I explained that uh, using multiple simultaneous bonds enables density specific targeting, right? It enables that we have some sharp cutoff where below that density, there's essentially no binding of an entity to the cell membrane, but above that density, there is very strong binding of that entity to the cell membrane. So if we have a case where let's say the normal cells have a low receptor density, but the cancer cells have a three times higher receptor density, we can now use multivalent particles to selectively target only the cancer cells, but not the, the healthy cells. Um, okay, so that, that was that. And now uh, that can be done, but now let's say we look at a tougher challenge sort of. Uh, because it can happen that we have this situation, right? We have a good cell A, which has the, a lot of the red receptors. We had a good cell C, which has a lot of the this black square-like receptors. And what we want to do is we want to target cell B. And now you see that the cell B is not overexpressing any particular receptor type. So 
how can we target a cell B in the presence of cell A and cell C? Uh, that clearly we cannot just target only the red receptors because then we would bind mostly to cell A. We cannot target only the this black square receptor because then we would mostly bind to the cell C. It seems that we need to use a combination of the red and black, right? And we can try to do this with nanoparticles or we can try to do this with polymers, right? How can we design this, let's say, copolymer such that it would only target a specific composition and a specific concentration of surface uh, membrane receptors? But if we have a different composition, right? So there is a different cell with a different, slightly different composition, uh, this polymer would not bind to that cell. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I do have a few more equations here, but they're not that terrible. So um, now th this is the problem, right? We have nanoparticle, it has some ligand profile, right? It has some ligands on it. We have a cell membrane, it has some density profile of different types of receptors. And we want to find, well, what is the interaction matrix, right? What is the interaction matrix between these ligands and the receptors that we need so that this nanoparticle would specifically target only a given uh, composition of memory receptors, right? Only a specific receptor profile. But if there is another cell that has the same receptors, right? It's expressing the same receptors, but in slightly different proportions, that it will not target that cell. And now again, we can go to statistical mechanics. We can write a uh, uh, partition function for one ligand. Each ligand can be either free, one, or it can be bound to any of the receptors on the membrane. And now this becomes a vector, this becomes a matrix. Um, and then you can calculate in the free energy. I will not go too much into this. Basically, I will just give you the final result is that the way to do it is of course the, the interaction matrix has to be a diagonal. So we only have cognate interactions. We could have guessed that. We need a matching ligand. Uh, the receptor profile has to match the ligand profile. We could have guessed this as well, but the interesting, the interesting thing is that that really was not expected. Is we find that the optimal selectivity occurs if the ligand binding strength is very very weak, so it's about one kT. Okay, and uh, one can derive this in one page of statistical mechanics or machinery, or we can do simulations and we get we get similar results. So that this goes against what the pharma industry is trying to do. Pharma industry is trying to uh, design uh, ligands that bind to specific receptors very strongly. But what we say here, if you, that that's not the best way to do it. Instead, if we want to target a specific composition of memory receptors, we need to have ligands that are weak. And, and sort of we can explain this by saying that the combinatorial entropy must play a role, right? And that combinatorial entropy will play a role if individual ligand binding is weak, such that we have many possible uh, combinations of binding these ligands to the, uh, to the receptors. And so that the theory was done for nanoparticles. Now, can we do it with polymers? Yes, we can also do it with, uh, with copolymers. Uh, and this was done by Pete Adalny, for my PhD student. So for example, here's a, like a Turner prod uh, of, we have three receptor types, uh, one, two, and three. And here, this shows the surface coverage, right? So how well a, a polymer is binding to the, to the membrane. And you see that we can design a polymer so that it will only bind to a specific uh, composition of the three receptor types, right? But if, if we go off in the composition, then uh, basically we get no binding. So it can be done. And uh, now just to clarify what we measure is, here, see some snapshots from Monte Carlo simulations. How am I on time? Oh, okay, four minutes. But um, we're interested in uh, this selectivity, right? So the first is the selectivity in how the surface coverage changes with the, with the number of receptors, right? That is the standard selectivity. We want to make this as sharp as possible. And then the second selectivity we want is the selectivity to the uh, receptor composition. So we want to make the curvature of the surface coverage with respect to changing our receptor composition. We want to make this as sharp as possible. 
if we can make this selectivity high and we can make this selectivity high, that means that we can specifically target a given composition of receptors. And what we found is that uh, he, he tried different types of polymer architectures and he found that actually the best polymers are the central alterating polymers, right? You can see that the yellow max is the maximum selectivity. The green one is the, the, the higher one, highest one. So central alterating are here. Uh, and that's because the central alterating copolymers were, uh, they seem to have the, the best cooperativity you know, between uh, binding of, between binding to different types of uh, receptors. And he also showed that polymers are actually much, much better than nanoparticles. And that's because in the polymer, well, polymer absorption to the surface is it, very cooperative. It binds as trains. Uh, this was done by Dejan a long time ago. Um, whereas for nanoparticles, each ligand binds approximately independently. So then um, here the lines are the result for nanoparticle and the, the symbols are the result for the polymers. And he found that you know, the, the curvature here, right, is, is much, much, much larger for polymers than for, for nanoparticles. So if you want to target a specific composition, you know, polymers are better than nanoparticles, but nanoparticles still also work. Okay. So now at the end, uh, two minutes, okay, I will just quickly describe how we can improve this further by employing the either a gas liquid or a liquid liquid phase separation within the membrane. So a membrane has a multitude of different receptor types and these receptors can prefer specific lipids. Uh, I think we all know the story of lipid rafts where different lipids can phase separate to form small rafts within the membrane. And here we just simply consider that the receptors within the membrane are, are mobile and they have some attractive interactions with them. So now if the, if the interaction is, is sufficiently strong, it's above the, the critical interaction strength, then we can get, of course, some phase separation, uh, pretty standard, whereas a function of receptor chemical potential we will get the job. It's the standard li liquid gas phase separation. And now, the question is not, can we now employ this to design our multivalent, multivalent binding such that when the multivalent vector or multi, multivalent nanoparticle comes to the surface, uh, the receptors bind to this vector. And because they bind, the, the local density increases. And now that tips the local density above the critical density, and then we have phase separation, which then further increases the receptor density within this binding region. And indeed, it turns out we can do that. So this was done by Jochen Yishesh. So she, she ran Monte Carlo simulations on the system. It's a, it's a two layer lattice model where uh, uh, we have a lower lattice of receptors, an upper lat lattice of nanoparticles where nanoparticles, larger lattice sites than the receptors. And she found that indeed, and so she measured the, the surface occupancy as a function of the receptor density for different receptor-receptor interactions. And she found that indeed, if we, if we add some receptor-receptor interaction that aids, that we get a collective effect with this aids in the cooperativity and we increase the selectivity. So as we increase the receptor density, there is a jump at some point from something very small to something very high, right? This is a log scale, so this is a huge jump. And here's the, the selectivity, which is essentially the, the slope of this line. It shows you as, as we add a receptor receptor interactions, we are increasing selectivity. And this can be explained, for example, we say that the selectivity can be written as the selectivity to changes in the uh, local receptor density times how the local receptor density depends on the receptor density in the bulk membrane, which can be approximated. You know, that if that is low, this can be approximated as a chemical potential. And we know that this is given by the isothermal compressibility, which at the you know, at the critical point or critical uh, fluctuations, it diverges. So if this diverges, that means that our selectivity will also diverge. Of course, this is a thermodynamic argument, so it only works in a thermodynamic limit if this multivalent vector was very very large. But even if this multivalent vector only forms ten bonds, this still uh, results in a very very large increase in selectivity. Right? So uh, the slope of this line is very very high, right? Change the receptor density by a factor of two gives us a few orders of magnitude change in the uh, in the binding strain. Uh, okay, 
So well, I think I'm at the end, so I'll summarize. So, uh, so I, what I wanted to explain, right, is that multiple simultaneous bonds enable super selectivity. And that is because of the combinatorial entropy of, of forming multiple bonds between a nanoparticle, a drug, and a, a cell membrane. And you know, this sort of explains why nature is using multiple simultaneous bonds so much. And we hope to convince pharma industry that maybe they should be using this as well. And so you know, I have to thank, you know, Vid Rowning, he did most of the stuff on the polymers. Jopping she did most of the stuff on the receptor receptor interactions. I have to uh, uh, yeah, I have to acknowledge NSF Seabed for funding, and of course, thank you for listening. And there, any questions, please uh, don't hesitate. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>